Hello and thanks for joining me today as I do a video tutorial on how to change the rear brake pads and rotors on a 2005 Lexus RX 330. It's a pretty straightforward process. The first thing we have to do is remove the caliper. There's two bolts here in the rear. I'm going to try to get in here so you can see them. If you can see them right there, there we go. There's one right here, and there's another one down below. Right here. I'm going to get my finger in there. You can see it right there, right in front of my finger. So those are the first two bolts we need to remove. They're a 17 millimeter. Whoops, don't have it the right way. That's that one. Get the bottom one now. Okay. I'll go ahead and remove the bottom one all the way. Okay. Set that down right there. Now I'll go ahead and remove the top one. All right. There we go. Now the caliper should come off fairly easily. There we go. Make sure you have it supported. It's not dangling from the brake cable here. You don't want to damage that. Okay, we got some really low pads here. Okay, next step, I'm going to go ahead and remove the rotor. For this, you can see right here, I'm going to come in here, you got those little holes. Right here, right here, they're threaded. For that, I have these, I believe they're 8 millimeter by uh, one pitch get those started in there okay I'll set this down here there we go and basically what this is going to do is going to go ahead and give us some force Okay, it's tight. Don't want to do one, you want to kind of do them both. Hey, how's it going? There we go. Oops, I don't want to spin it on us. There you go, now you can see the rotor is working its way out. Make sure when you do this that you do not have the emergency brake on because it'll not let go. Okay, that should be. I have to wiggle that loose. See, because you have these, the e-brake is held by these shoes. So if you had it engaged, your rotor would never come off. Okay, let's go ahead and back those out. We're going to need to take one piece from this rotor and transfer it to the new one. Go ahead and set those aside. This little rubber piece right here. We'll go ahead and pop that out. It comes out from the back to the front. There we go, I got that out. We'll transfer that to our new rotor. When we're ready to put it on there. Next step we're gonna need to do is swap out the pads here. Let me go ahead and try to move this so we can get in a little closer. As you can see here, the pads are in here. We have a new set of pads with new hardware right here. I went with the um, Power Stop Evolution set, ceramic disc brake pads with hardware kit, and also we're doing the same thing here, Power Stop Evolution Rotor. Um, very high quality parts, uh, exceeds OEM in my opinion, I've used them for over 24 years and I've had great success. So I'm going to continue to use them on my uh, family car as well. So go ahead and take these brakes out. What you want to do is kind of pay attention to how they are. We're going to go ahead and pop this one out first. So realize the orientation because we have to put this little piece onto the uh, new pad as well. Um, now what I'm going to do is use this wrench, or pliers here, and uh, open up the caliper by pressing on the old brake pad. Since we're not reusing them, we can damage them all we want. This is a little hard to do. I remember I had issues last on the other side as well. You need to 
get uh, one more tool right back. You think you got everything figured out and you realize you didn't bring a big enough wrench. So here we go. This is how we're going to go ahead and get this to open up. Let's see, where am I going to want to grab from? Don't want to damage it. The caliper itself, that is. But we do want to get this sucker open. So right there looks like a good spot. Let's see, we should... There we go. Opening the way I would like. Let's go ahead and expand this out. And let's uh, go ahead and get this on the back side here. There we go. That should do it. There we go. Get it all the way down. There. So, this is what I used just a large channel lock pressing against the old pad so we don't damage anything on the new one. I had previously taped that up so as to uh, help not marring surfaces. Um, this caliper here, they put a nice little, whoops, can't get it in there for you. Nice little finger hole right back here. You can see right here, helps you manipulate the pads. There's not a lot of room once you get the new pads installed. So we'll go ahead and get this one out. There's a lot of gunk on the hardware okay so this is the inside pad okay okay now as you can see we got the hardware in here we're gonna go ahead and change this out as well our kit came with new hardware now this might be a little difficult as it's been in here for a long time okay this is probably about the only really not difficult but not straightforward either you got to kind of fiddle with these things I done the uh, other side prior to doing this one so I know that it's really tight in here there's not a lot of space to pull these things out it's like they only come out one way you know what let me get you I'm not uh, you guys aren't in the frame there. Let's get you up higher. There we go. So I'm trying to wrestle with the hardware the clips now. For some reason. Okay, there's the way it goes. It goes out the back, I guess. Huh. Oh, there we go. Slide that forward. Oops. My finger stuck. This is probably the most frustrating part of this whole thing is getting these out. That's what I experienced on the other side as well. Let me turn this around. For some reason, I just like there we go. So realize your orientation of how that came out so you know how to put the next one in. We'll go ahead and do that now. Here's our new one. So we're gonna hold this up so it came out just like this. So we want this to go in the same way. Let's see if we can do this without getting it stuck. biggest issue with this brake job is getting all this hardware to fit back in there just right okay so we have the orientation of that one let's go ahead and pop the other one out and then we'll go ahead and install them both and now there's these little tabs here that help it let go there we go 
Okay. Just wants to hold on that one side. It's just caught up here between this gap. We don't have a lot of space right there. There's like an angle I can pull it out at. Huh. The simplest little thing here is causing all these issues. We'll be done with this brake job. <laughs> if it wasn't for this little guy giving me problems. Okay, it needs to just get through that little spot right there. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that one goes oriented like this, and this one is oriented like that. Okay, so we just got that one out. So let's go ahead and put this one in. Since I think we figured out how to get the clearance we needed. I don't know if you can see it there, but I'm not doing anything special. Just struggling with it. Oops. It'd help if I had it going the right way. Thing very confusing. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. I push that down. Make sure we get it all the way in there. Okay, that hardware is installed. Now we'll do the other one. And it looks like, okay, like this. So let's try our method we had. So what I did to get it in was drop this in first. And I'm pressing this caliper. So I got a little bit of room. And there's just like a little bit of pushing you gotta do there. Just make sure, am I doing this the right direction again? Yeah, okay. Let's see, I can get a little bit of space there. Can give me a little bit. There we go. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so we got our hardware installed. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is there's a few points where the pads slide on the hardware, and it came with some supplied lube. I'm gonna go ahead and lube that now. It's this stuff right here. It's a high temp ceramic uh, brake grease. So we're gonna go ahead and put it, I'll show you on the old ones. Um, the pads click into this part here right in here so we're going to put some grease on these upper portions in here because that's where it moves all right not too much but just a nice little film and spread it and get that back wall too if you can Because your new pads are going to be sliding in this groove. So you want to give them a little bit of lube so they don't get stuck over time. A little bit there. And I'll go over to the other, other hardware set on the other side. And then after that, we'll install the pads. Slide the new rotor on and we are almost done. Now, like I said, these rotors are really tight. There's not a lot of real estate in there, especially once you get the new pads, because they are full length, you know, full width. So as you can see, it's gonna get a little tight. Let's see if we can get this. Hopefully we don't have any struggles. All right, now's the part where we're gonna put our new rotor on. But before we do that, we need to scrape some of this gunk off of this surface here. So we have a nice fresh surface for the new rotor to sit on once it's torqued down. 
can get some of this rust off of your hub here. Just give it enough nice scrape down, get whatever's loose. ring coming off. Okay, that looks good. Now we got our new rotor. I don't want to get it too dirty now. I'll go ahead and install that little rubber piece that we had here. There we go. Now we're going to line that up. We got the pads to install. Okay, let's see. We have one pad. This is the one that the piston pushed on, and you can see it has the little sensor on this side. So where you're gonna emulate that here, we need to move this over to the other side. These things came with them, the little sensors, and they just clip on. So it's not like they're permanent. And a little side note here this portion here was um, squared off and when you pressed it on the pad it hit against the material and didn't slide on in place and I can show you there it hit so I went ahead and rounded these edges off prior to the install so I know that I knew that that was already an issue they didn't go on snug okay so this is our caliper pad here you can see it's got the ring the disc was pushing so now we have a mat we have our match. Okay. And now the back other one, we have a match there. We got that piece on. So they're set. Okay. We're going to go ahead and install the piston one first, the piston side. Okay. So they want to go like this. These little tabs here, see it against the silver here. This little tab slides into that hardware part that we looped. Pretty straightforward. Something's not right here. Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, no, no, we're good. Seemed like I didn't, uh, seemed too easy. <laughs> seemed like I didn't do something right. Okay, let's get some of this old stuff out of the way here. Get our uh, grease out of the way. Okay, now our last pad, same thing. Like I said, it is tight with these new, with the full length pads. Let's see, where am I gonna get the most room? Oh, nope. I need to get all the room I can. So let's go forward, slide that back. Just make sure you don't back it up the back, which you cannot do with this set. Okay. Like I said, it's, there's not a lot of real estate in here to install these new pads. That finger hole in the back, like I said, comes into play. Alright, let's set this down. I need to make a little more room here. I need to slide this portion forward. We don't have enough room to clear our new thick pad. Okay. Is that enough? Get it in there. No, it's not enough. So let's see if we can get this out some more. There we go, if I can slide that back. Okay, 
So that's all I can do right there. Okay, so I'm gonna get that finger hole holding that other pad in. Let's see if we have enough space for this one. Oh, just barely. Okay. Excellent. Now we gotta push this one in place without moving the whole setup here. Let's try that side first. There we go. Okay. That should be enough space, I think. Remember what I said, that finger hole in the back? You need to keep tension on those pads so they don't collapse on you. There we go. Now let's see if that's enough to get it over the rotor. We put our caliper back on. Oh, that's why we didn't quite have the caliper position. There we go, and get that first bolt started. I'm gonna go in with my hands, just finger tighten it, and we'll get the second one. sure you don't cross thread anything and then it's gonna make your job a lot harder further with the fingers save yourself some time with the wrench okay all right now when you tighten these I believe a rough uh, factory torque spec is roughly around um, 50 probably not even a little bit less than that you can tell when you're in there a little tight real snug all right you gotta remember you don't want to tighten it over tighten it and snap them and you also gotta remember you will need to get these off again someday maybe so that right there we got everything on you reinstall your wheel and that's it it's very simple um, like I said the hardest part obviously was uh, Fiddling with the calipers, getting the hardware in. There's not a lot of space in this caliper. It's a real tight real estate, especially with some new pads. But as you can see, pretty straightforward. What do we have to do? Two bolts, other than the five to get the wheel off. So pretty simple. And um, I've used these this brand of brakes before. I highly recommend them. Very excellent quality. This whole kit, front and back, was less than $200 for this Lexus. That's four rotors, two sets of pads, and all the hardware. All right, well, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, as soon as I get the front kit, I'll go ahead and do a video on how to change the front as well. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was uh, useful. Thanks again. Take care.